Hi, I'm Sarah Morehouse, one of the librarians at Empire State College. In this video, I will introduce you to the process of getting permission to use copyrighted material. It's not terribly straightforward, but you don't have to remember all the details. We provide worksheets to guide you through the process, and you can always get help from a librarian. Copyright reserves to the copyright owner the exclusive right to make copies, share copies, and make derivative works from protected materials. The copyright owner can license others to do those things under whatever terms they negotiate. Whenever you want to make or share copies or make derivative works, first you have to consider whether you have the right to do those things. If the item is in the public domain, you can go ahead and do it. If what you want to do falls under educational use or fair use, then you can also do that, but otherwise you need to get permission. What if the material you want to use is in our library's databases? Then it will depend on what our license with that database permits. You need to ask a librarian because some of the database's licenses state that only strictly personal use is allowed without further permission. Another possibility is that the work you want to use is published under a Creative Commons license. You will need to look at the particular Creative Commons license to know. It's possible that you'll still need permission for the use you intend. For example, some Creative Commons licenses state no derivative works, so if you wanted to create an adaptation or mashup of the original work, you'd need to get permission. Other licenses state non-commercial use, so if you wanted to use the work in a way that would make money or have to do with marketing, you would need to get permission for that too. When I say get permission, it means the same thing as getting a license. Often the terms of the license involve paying royalties. Sometimes they are a trivial amount, but you need to be prepared for some pretty staggering figures. Because you're entering into a contract and potentially spending college funds, you need to make sure that you're authorized to do this. Check with your supervisor. Also, have an idea of what funds are available and how much you'd be willing to spend. A license to use copyrighted materials will have certain terms. One of the most important things to specify is exactly what work you are using, how much of it, and exactly which part of it. If it is a text, you'll need to specify pages or paragraphs. If it's an audio or audio-video recording, you'll need to give the beginning and ending timestamps. The license will also specify how you are using it. It makes a difference to tell the copyright owner that you want to use it for non-profit educational purposes. Most of them will be more willing to grant you permission and will charge you less for that. You also need to specify whether it will be online or in print. Another term to be specified is how many people will have access to it. If it will be online, you should mention whether it's behind a password or out in public. If it's not online, you should make an estimate based on your situation, such as the number of students enrolled in your class. Your license should also specify how long your rights to the material extend. You may secure rights to use it indefinitely, or it may be a specific time, like a year or until the course term is over. You may also have the option to renew your license. If the copyright owner grants permission, one of the terms they set may be royalties. For classroom and online learning use, you can estimate 30 cents per page per student, but don't be surprised if it's higher or lower. Prices also tend to skyrocket for materials from the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. Popular creative works like songs, movies, TV shows, and novels are often prohibitively expensive, but exceptions to that rule still happen, especially if your use is educational and will be shared only with a limited audience. There are multiple avenues to pursue a license to use someone else's copyrighted work. Some are easier than others. It's always best to start by checking whether the Copyright Clearance Center manages the license, because if they do, they take care of all the details for you. If they don't, then you can try other methods. As I said, first check whether you can get permission through the Copyright Clearance Center. The CCC is a corporation that has grown into the role of managing copyright licenses and royalties for most written works published in the United States. They have a search interface that lets you put in the title of the work you want to use and the details of which part you want to use and how you want to use it. There's a small per-use fee, plus the licensing fee that goes to the copyright owner, and then you save and print a copy of your license. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Copyright Clearance Center's pay-per-use service. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Copyright Clearance Center's pay-per-use service. The easiest way to find the Copyright Clearance Center is to search for it in Google. If you've never used the Copyright Clearance Center before, you'll need to create your own individual account. Empire State College does not have an institutional account for us to use. Instead, it's up to each department to have a departmental account or provide a way for faculty and staff to pay for items from their own accounts. In the right column, click Create New Account. Then fill in the required identifying and billing information and click Submit. Now that you have your own Copyright Clearance Center account, go back to the beginning and click the Get Permission link in the Google search results. Here is the Copyright Clearance Center's basic search box, where you can enter the title of any work for which you want to get permission. Here are the results of my search for the book, The Smartest Guys in the Room. There are three items listed, and each of them is a different edition of the same book. I'll choose the one on top. The permissions summary shows me different options for using the work, such as use in electronic course materials, which would be for anything that goes into an online course or electronic reserve system, use in print course materials, which would be for face-to-face -face instruction, share content electronically, such as on a website or blog, and republish or display content, which would be for including it in a book, article, or presentation of your own. Some of the options say special order, and others say contact info. Special order means that you can fill out a form, get the license, and pay royalties, all here on the Copyright Clearance Center website. Here is the form you fill out. It asks for information that will confirm the exact copyrighted material that you want to use, including which parts of it. It also asks about the number of people who will have access to the work. Line item reference is a number that you create so that you can keep track of your Copyright Clearance Center orders. This is the course information page, where you enter information about your institution, yourself, and the course for which the material is intended. Next, it gives you a summary of your order. Under Cart Total, it may say to be determined, as it does in this case. When the exact amount is calculated, you will be asked to pay with a credit card or invoicing. The Copyright Clearance Center doesn't manage licensing for all works. In some cases, all they provide is contact information for the copyright owner. While you don't get to pay and get your license on the spot, it does save you a lot of time and effort researching who to contact. Now I'll show you how to do that. If the Copyright Clearance Center doesn't provide contact information for the copyright owner of the work that you want to use, you will have to do some research to find out who it is and how to contact them. Start by asking a librarian for help. Go back to Google and search for Copyright Clearance Center. Again, click Get Permission and use the Copyright Clearance Center search box to search for the title you want. Again, select the edition you want and click Permission Options. In this case, if I want to use the work for document delivery, I need to contact the copyright owner directly. The Copyright Clearance Center provides contact information, so I click the Contact Info button. A box pops up with an address to which I can send my permissions letter. Some copyright owners will have a form for you to fill out online to get permission. If they do, make sure you save your completed form and any confirmation emails you receive. Some copyright owners provide an email address that's designated for permissions and licensing. In that case, you can use the permissions letter template, which I'll link to in a moment. Make sure to save all your email correspondence. It's a good idea to print it out or download it and save it to an external memory device. If there's no way to get permission online, you'll have to send a letter. Our permissions letter template will guide you through specifying the material you want to use and how you want to use it. It also provides a form for the copyright owner to fill out and send back, which licenses you to use the specified material in the specified way. Enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope along with the permissions letter. 
Send it by certified mail so you know when your recipient signs for it. This can be a big time saver because you don't sit there wondering if anyone ever received your letter. If they don't respond promptly, you can make further inquiries right away. Click the button to be taken to the permissions letter template. You can copy and paste it into a Word document or email. Then you fill in your own details. Next I'll show you what the permissions letter looks like. The permissions letter template is a Google document that you can copy and paste into any format you like. All you have to do is delete the filler text and the italicized suggestions and fill in your own information. The first part is just like any other business letter, with the current date, the address of the person or business you're contacting, and the salutation, dear sir or madam. It says, I would like permission to use the following materials. Then you need to fill in the full t citation information, at minimum all the author's full names, the full official title, the publisher or the journal title, and the publication date. You also need to specify which parts of the material you want to use, with chapters, page numbers, or timestamps. Next, you need to write a brief, clear paragraph or two explaining exactly what you intend to do with the material that you want to use. Pertinent information includes how it will be accessed, how many people will have access to it, and whether the use is non-commercial and or educational. Then there is the closing, which mentions that you have enclosed a sample license and a self-addressed stamped envelope. And of course, you sign it. On the next page is the sample license, which some copyright owners may choose to fill out. Others have their own licenses, probably something that their lawyers have put together for them. Both are legally valid and binding. Sometimes a copyright owner can't be located or identified. This usually happens with anonymously authored works, or works whose authors have died. Their copyrights pass on to their estate, but if their works weren't bringing much in in the way of royalties, their heirs may be uninterested in or even unaware of their responsibilities. When the copyright owner can't be identified or contacted, the work is called an orphan work. It is impossible to get permission to use this work, so you will still be liable for copyright infringement if someone does decide to defend the copyright. With orphan works, the only short-term solution is to reduce what you want to do with the work until it qualifies for fair use, or use something else. In the long term, copyright activists are trying to introduce a law that will protect people from being sued or prosecuted for copyright infringement if they can demonstrate a good faith effort to locate and contact a copyright owner for permissions. But that is only a future possibility. In the meantime, orphan works are off-limits except for fair use. So in this video, I've talked about when you need to get permission to use a work, what terms are usually included in a license, including royalties, how to locate the copyright owner and contact them asking them for permission, and what to do about the issue of orphan works. Please also see our other videos on what is copyright, public domain, fair use, educational use, and more. You can also use the library's copyright information website as a quick reference.